Steve is with us in California. Hi, Steve. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. I just discovered you last week, so thanks for taking my call. Honor. How can I help? So uh, I'm a lawyer, a couple years out of law school, and I just got a new job uh, at a big law firm making about $200,000 a year. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So I've got about uh, 88K in debt, mm -hmm. um, but after having listened to you for a week, I, I know I'll have no, no uh, problem paying that off real quick this year. Good. Uh, my, my question for you is, I know this job isn't very sustainable. I work like you know, 80 plus hours a week, lots of stress, and I don't particularly enjoy the work, but I'm good at it. Uh, I want to eventually leave and become a government prosecutor, uh, but that'll be a huge pay cut. So I kind of wanted to get your advice on how long I should stay in my current high paying job to kind of set myself up for financial success and frankly, to capitalize on, you know, the years of school and I've, that I've been in. Mm. So you're on the standard uh, meat grinder one, two years out of school <laughs> lawyer thing. And if you, if you survive the meat grinder, you might become one of the 47 partners. Right, right. I don't see that happening for me just based on my interests, but you know, I get I'd get huge raises every year, huge bonuses every year, so it, it seems like I'd be throwing money away to leave you know without spending some time in this job, but mm -hmm. kind of wondering how long that needs to be. Well, I mean, mathematically a long time, uh physically, emotionally, and spiritually not long at all. <laughs> right? And that's what you're saying. That's the juxtaposition or the paradox you're facing. So um, I certainly want to stay there long enough to get that 88 grand gone, right? And you just got mm -hmm. the job. Right, right. So what would be your ideal game plan? I'm thinking I'm thinking two years I could I could definitely do. Um, but I'm just trying to think like, you and know. Then, I, and I don't then if you take house. the job as a prosecutor's, in the prosecutor's office, you'd make what? Uh, probably 80, 80K a year. Okay, so 80, 80 to 100. So more than cut in half. Yeah, yeah, so, and it would probably max out at like 120. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I'm in the kind of weird position of my income peaking early in my career rather than later. Well, with that job, but not right. not, in, not, in, not in other forms of law. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. You know, the, your, your nuanced choice within the law is causing that, not the law. Sure. Because, I mean, you could stay on the other track and actually step back from the 80 hours, go open your own boutique firm and make three or four hundred ten years from now. Um, yeah, depend, de depending right. on the area of practice you're in and so forth, what city you're in in California, all those kinds of things. So um, that, that all of those things are possible. So what's the allure of the prosecutor's office that's worth $100,000 a year? Uh, kind of what I've always wanted to do, but... After going through law school, I did, I did well enough to get this high-paying job, so I kind of listened to my professors, and they said, you know, you got to go do this. That's not the question. You're able to. That's not the question. <laughs> okay. The question is, what is so fun about being a prosecutor that it's worth you paying $120,000 a year for the privilege? Dropping from uh, 200 to 80. Slightly better quality of life, but also just kind of what my passion was going through school. I like the criminal law aspect of it. I like the justice aspect of it. And you can't do that on the defense attorney side? Uh, that I was a passive-aggressive question. Attorney side. Huh? I could get the criminal law experience on the defense attorney side, yeah. but not necessarily the, the kind of calling towards doing justice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I just, I, I really, I mean, I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate the nobility of the call that's on you. I don't have a problem with any of that, but what you're asking me, I'm just trying to reframe your question back to you to give you some ways mm -hmm. of thinking about it. Um, sure. in this, in, I'll give you an example in this borrowed, uh, borrowed future podcast. We were talking about them meeting this morning, uh, that we're doing on student loans that's out there and is real popular right now. Seth Godin said, uh, you can spend $200,000 to go to college or you can spend $10,000 and go to community college and have 190000 in your pocket to open a business with. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I'm trying to frame this up. I'm using that kind of mindset to say, Actually, okay, yeah, yeah you're going to get down from, but there's more than two options in this scenario. 
That's fatalism. We know there's more than two options. Mm -hmm. More than 80 hours a week and you grind up into meat and there's nothing left of your life. You have no marriage. You have no future. You have no relationships. All you are is a worn out lawyer making 250 three years, four years from now. You don't want to do that. I'm with you on that. I got no right. problem with that. I wouldn't want to do that either. Um, right. That's what I'm scared of. The only other option is not a pay cut in half. And the only place to get justice is not in the prosecutor's office. And so sure. start thinking about, you know, that's why I ask about defense as an example. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know. I, if I'm in your shoes, though, I'm going to start thinking of ways I can have high quality of life, which is 40 to 60 hours a week, and I mm -hmm. can make 250 trending towards 350 with my law degree in California and tickle the justice bone. Right. And I'm just going to start thinking about that, and I'm going to start asking around. you got two years to work on this problem. Because you're going to stay there for two years anyway. Right. So go talk to some of the prosecutors. Go talk to some of the defense people. Find people that are of high moral quality and noble character that are in the law. They're there. They're, they're not all over the place, but they're there. <laughs> and yeah. um, sit down and talk to them and say, this is what's happening. I, go talk to a, a, a judge. Go talk to a federal judge. Ask him if you can have coffee. Because judgeships don't just yeah. come out of the prosecutor's office. I have two friends appointed into judgeships this year. Both of them came out of private practice. Right. So, um, and that you that tickles the justice funny bone about as much as anything does. Sure, sure. So, and federal judgeships, pretty good gig. So, anyway, the the um, I'm just thinking through this with you. You just got to figure out a way to say, don't get trapped in the uh, the nuanced thinking that there's two options. Anytime somebody presents me two options and neither one of them sound fun, I always say C, not A or B, C, none of the above. Start again. Take the essay version of the of the test instead of the multiple choice version. And let's dig down into this in the next two years and let's find out what your options are. I think you can find something that will do all that. If you want to be a prosecutor, I'm not mad at you. But I don't want you to make a $120,000 to $200,000 a year decision based solely on this on, on a uh, – improper view that that's the only way to create justice in the land is from that office. Uh, that would not be true.